What's going on YouTube? Wow, I know it's been a minute and uh, just wanted to check in and give you guys an update. Um, and this actual update is about mountain biking, which uh, seems like you probably think I've taken a hiatus from because I really haven't posted much about mountain biking at all. And that's what kind of started this whole channel and uh, what I got into. And so because of that, um, I know it's been a while. So I kind of want to just give an update of some things that's going on. Talk about a little bit about uh, my experiences with mountain biking and where I stand today with the sport. You know, when you get into this sport or just like when you start anything new, it's a learning experience. There's a learning curve and there's things that you have to go through and just experience to really understand uh, where you stand in that sport. It's funny because I watch a lot of YouTube uh, channels in regards to people who start their channels about mountain biking. And I usually support many of them. Many of them, you know, have really good content. You can see that they're, they're trying to get used to the editing and the recording. And, you know, it's, it's fun to watch someone start from scratch and, and to see the growth over time. As will many of, you know, my day one subscribers have probably done with me as well. And so I try to support those guys as much as possible. But it's interesting because so many of them go through the same things that I went through when I started. And so I find it ironic and funny that it's not just me going through these things. Uh, the first thing that um, I think is, is, is kind of an interesting journey is trying to find what mountain bike fits you as the rider. What mountain bike <coughs> is the funnest to ride, which mountain bike is uh, the most responsive, which one is the most safest, which one um, is more geared towards your style. And so over the years, it's, it's taken me a while to find that out. And uh, of course, you know, I started with the basic of basic bikes. I started with the GT Aggressor Pro and I started off with the Nashiki Colorado. Then I upgraded to the Cannondale uh, Catalyst. Then after that, uh, which, oh, then the GT Avalanche. That was an upgrade from that. And then after that, I went with the big boy, went with the full suspension Specialized Epic. After the Epic, went to the Specialized Stump Jumper. After the Stump Jumper, went to the uh, Specialized Chisel. So yeah, I've had my fair share of bikes. I think in total I've had uh, eight bikes so far because I had a couple of GT Pros and I had a couple of Nashiki Colorados as well. One here and one in my home state. And so, um, yeah, I, I think during this COVID time, I really had time to actually sit down and, and analyze, you know, what do I want to do with this sport? Where am I going from here with it? Um, this past year, or actually this past two years, has been kind of tough. You know, I don't want to go into my whole personal life right now, but financially, um, it's been tough. I've uh, had, I don't know, I've, I've had so many deaths in my family in the past two years. It's just unbelievable. And uh, unexpected deaths as well. And um, it's just been a lot going on, family-wise, financial-wise, life-wise, work-wise. Um, it's just been a lot going on. So I really have not had time to ride a bike. And all of this happened around the time where I basically was building my specialized chisel. And that bike, I have a lot of connections to because when you build your own bike, it's very different than going out buying a bike. You feel more um, at one with it, but I put a lot of money into that bike. I put a lot of time in that bike. I put a lot of love in that bike. I put um, a lot of work in that bike. Uh, you know, I drove eight hours to Alabama to go buy that special, uh, you know, frame, uh, and then 
you know, uh, my my friend uh, Norm actually took his time to actually help me build it and put it together. And the good thing about building a bike from scratch is you learn about every single component, every part, what they do, how they work, how to put it together, how to take it off. Um, I learned so much from that experience. So that that bike holds uh, a lot, you know, it, 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 I'm attached to it. And um, I haven't been able to take advantage of it. You know, my goal was to, to build it and really get into cross country. Um, as I started trying to do that, I then realized that you know, you have to put so many miles in to really be a true cross country rider. And I just don't have time to ride a bike that much. So what I thought I was gonna do just wasn't the reality when everything else was going on in my life. And, um, and so unfortunately, you know, I had to uh, come to the realization that I'm not really gonna go into that sport. You know, I did one cross country race one time. I really loved it, I thought it was fun. I thought I was going to continue that route, but um, I, I just don't have the time to, to put into it to, to really go that, that route because there's some really good riders out there. And um, make the long story short, uh, got into a situation, in a financial situation where um, I needed some money pretty quickly. And uh, with me, I'm the type of person where I don't mind getting rid of material things if it's a situation in which I need money. I'll sell pretty much anything that I own in the house. And so, you know, I've downgraded cars, I've downgraded, you know, bikes, I've, I've, I've sold things that mean a lot to me. You know, um, I was a shoe collector at one point in time. I had over 300 pairs of shoes, uh, you know, actually, uh, from the Jordans that I sold before I moved into this house, I sold probably about, I don't know, 15 pairs of Jordans that, that added up to almost a third of the down payment of this house. So, you know, if I need money, I don't, I don't mind getting rid of things. It's not that big of a deal. I feel like you can always, um, you know, get material things back. It's, it's just called responsibilities and you, and you have to do that at some point in time, no matter, no matter how hard it is. But recently, um, you know, uh, I got into a situation and I put a lot of things up for sale. I put things up for sale on Marketplace, OfferUp, eBay, and the chisel was one of them. Not expecting it to sell before some of the other stuff that I put up, but it sold. And uh, I had a guy that ended up buying it. Um, I did take about a thousand dollar loss on that bike, but when I look at the bigger scheme of things, um, out of all the bikes that I've owned, most of them I broke even on, but there were three bikes that I actually made a profit on. The Specialized Epic, I made a thousand dollar profit on that bike because I bought it on sale. The Stump Jumper, I actually made a fifteen hundred dollar profit on that one because um, I bought it on sale and I got a rebate from, from Specialized during that time. This was all before COVID. And then another bike I had, you know, I made maybe about a three, four hundred dollar profit on it because of the upgrading component. So I'm up, you know, about um, three thousand, you know, when it comes to profit on bikes that I've sold because I used to buy them cheap and sell them, you know, for a decent price. That's before COVID when you would find good sales. Now you just don't find those type of sales anymore. But um, I was able to, I, I took a thousand dollar loss on the chisel, but in the, in, the, in the bigger picture, you know, I was up 3,000 from bikes I sold, so now I'm only up two. So I still have been, still I'm okay. You know, you gotta take a loss sometimes. So I needed the money. I was able to pay the things that I needed to pay off uh, once I sold it. And it left me with a $1,300 budget uh, to buy a new bike. And on the next video, uh, I'll kind of talk about that. So yeah, I um, I had the thirteen hundred dollar budget, and and uh, you know in this day and time, I, I I looked on the Dix website, right? Looking at the GT Aggressor Pros, a GT Aggressor Pro, they are selling between seven hundred and eight hundred dollars. I bought two Aggressor Pros for four hundred dollars each. I bought two of them for what they're selling for now. That's how cheap they used to be when they used to go on sale. You can get a GT Aggressor Pro for 400 bucks at Dick's on sale. It's crazy. 
Um, then Ashiki Colorado, I bought two of those. I think one I bought for four hundred, and the other one I bought for five. You know, I hear they're going for like the same price if you can even find one. Um, you know, bikes have just went up, and you know these shops are doing doing. You know, they're doing very very well. Still have low inventory for a lot of the popular bikes. You know, they're selling selling like hotcakes. So. It's just the day and times that we're in, but um, it was very sad to see that bike go, but you know, it's a situation that happened. But so because of that, the point I'm trying to make is I had to really think about now that I have this budget, what type of bike do I want? What really got me loving the sport? What really got me into um, having fun with mountain bike riding? Because one of the things that ends up happening is when you start advancing into more technical and expensive bikes, I really wasn't having as much fun as I was on the cheaper bikes. Because, you know, with the Stump Jumper, for example, that particular bike, the geometry on it, I never could get very comfortable or it just wasn't the right fit for me. I had this, the shortest cranks. I always had pedal strikes. The sag never really adjusted right. The cockpit never felt right. The most beautiful bike I had for sure, you know, the acid mint was beautiful, but it just wasn't, it wasn't the right fit. So I always, you know, was thinking about that when I was riding. The Epic was definitely tied for my top funnest one, but even with that bike, you know, it was, it was a technical bike. I mean, it actually um, had an automatic you know, um, traction in the back, you know, and then with the rear shock, you had still had to make sure that that was right. But still, the Epic, the Epic was definitely, it, it's tied as my number one fun bike. And Larry, I know you're going to watch this video. You were right. You told me not to sell it. I should have kept that bike. But at the time, I just didn't really, I didn't understand. I was still trying to figure it all out, um, trying to find out which bike really was for me. And so, um, but I should have kept that Epic. But if I had to narrow it down to two of my top bikes in this tide, it would be the Epic and it would be the Nishiki Colorado. The Colorado was a bike that I had just plain fun on. I didn't have to worry about nothing technical. I just had a good time riding that bike. And most of my videos, I, especially in the beginning, that's what I was riding on. Um, you know, I had 27 and a half plus tires. It was, I used to call it the tank. It was a beast that would just go over everything. And, um, and so I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm looking I'm looking back at something like that, an all-around mountain bike that's similar to the Colorado. It may be heavy, but I don't care. I'm not racing anybody. I just want to have fun again on these trails. I don't want to get into the technical things. I don't want to have to worry about, you know, all of the, the features and components on the bike. I just want to have fun riding mountain bikes. And so um, the bike that I ended up going with, with my budget, which is a entry level bike, which I'll show in the next video, uh, that's what that's what it relates to, you know, and that's what I want to get back at. Not saying that any of my bikes took me away fully from all of that, but definitely I felt like um, I was losing the fun back into the sport. With this new bike that I have, I'm not trying to upgrade anything. I'm not even trying to buy anything that matches the bike like whatever I have left over from all the bikes that I've owned is what I'm going to put on this bike I'm not doing anything extra to this bike <laughs> I just want to go out there and have fun on the trail again and so yes I am still interested in mountain biking I'm still I still love the sport I'm going to get back on the trails more often now but I feel like after these what three years I've been doing this and this is like my ninth bike I feel like I'm back to the essence of why I got into this sport. So that's just an update with me. Um, next video, I will definitely show you what I bought. And uh, and yeah, we'll go from there. I hope you guys are doing well. And uh, sorry, you know, it's just been a lot going on. Sorry for, um, you know, being being MIA for a while. But I really do hope all of you guys are doing good. Because these are these are very tough times for everybody right now. You know, it's it's this whole economy is a struggle. You know, from gas to food to, you know, just everything. It's just like, it's almost unbelievable that times have changed the way that they have. Um, it, it's, it just feels like I'm in a whole different world sometimes, you know. Uh, even with, you know, COVID still going around. You know, I just got over that again for the second time uh, a couple of weeks ago. You know, and it's just like the worst. 
you know so it's it's, it's just been tough so anyway um, don't want to hold you guys up it's just an update on me i'll check you out in the next video and i'll let you see the new ride take care guys peace